Sigma has just announced their two new lenses in Premium Art Series, 20mm and 24mm f1.4 for Sony E-mount and Sigma Lumix Leica L-mount. In this video, I'm going to put this new 20mm through its paces, talk about what 20mm is good for, how it performs, its build and features, and of course, the price. This is a lens that really lives up to Sigma's reputation and a one that you just could be looking for. So keep watching, don't skip to find out more about it. This is not a first Sigma 20mm lens released recently. Sigma 20mm f2, the GDN Contemporary, came out earlier this year. And it is an amazing little lens, but now Sigma is updating their huge and heavy older version, the f1.4 art, with this new model. Check out also my review of the brand new Sigma 24mm f1.4 art. A link to that video is in the description below. Performance, there's no surprise that this delivers outstanding results across the board. Classic Sigma art here. Images shot with this lens are superbly sharp. No problem with sharpness or inquiring it even wide open at f1.4. It only gets better when closing the aperture down, just like with every other quality lens. I have noticed recently that there has been a major change in how modern lenses are designed and produced these days, and this is no exception. There's less to complain uh, or to find wrong with these lenses now. They are designed for modern mirrorless cameras, and in the premium lens like this, the exceptional quality it delivers is just given, standard. There is some chromatic aberration visible. I wouldn't say that is unusual or bad, it's not. There's almost zero vignetting when using in camera image correction or when applying lens correction in post when that is available from Adobe soon. This makes it a really good lens choice for astrophotography. Also, there are some hardware features to help astrophotography, but about that in just a minute. Bokeh is really nice and smooth. There's just something cool about shooting with wide aperture, wide angle lenses. Maybe it's just that I am personally not associating the shallow depth of field with wide angle of view, but I really like it. A little bit unusual look, I guess. Most wide angle lenses are capable of focusing really close, and this is no different. The minimum focusing distance is 23 centimeter, which is pretty much right at the end of the lens, making it possible to get some interesting and unusual shots with it. It's a lens really well suited for video work as well. Great for gimbal work. It gives enough coverage, wide coverage, to give that enhanced sense of motion, but it's not wide enough to distort the pers perspective too much. It focuses very well. It is not too heavy either. 20 millimeter is great for vlogging or filming yourself like this handheld. It is wide enough to include a little bit more of your surrounding as well when you're filming yourself. It's not stabilized lens, but the, the focal length, the 20 millimeter, actually is very forgiving to any small micro jitters. Bad news for all filmmakers that there is quite a bit of focus breathing visible. Yeah, it is a problem, but it's not unusual with Sigma primes like this. Overall, this is a great wide angle prime suitable for, for a very wide range of shooting scenarios. This lens really performs very well and is very easy to shoot with. Built, this is where this and the 24mm are making a statement and are standing a little bit out more of the crowd. It's not the lightest of 20mm lenses out there, as it is heavier, nearly double the weight of both Sigma's own f2 version and the Sony f1.8. It weighs 635 gram heavier, but it is f1.4 lens. Really decent size overall, large front glass element and 82mm filter thread and there's also back filter holder built in as well. What's different about this lens are the buttons or some of these buttons. We have a standard auto manual focus switch, standard focus hold button that can be programmed to whatever you want via the camera. Manual aperture ring, more and more common with modern lenses these days. This one is the clickable with a switch for those of you who want to control the brightness with aperture when filming. There's also an aperture lock switch. This is something that I haven't seen on the lens before. I personally do not use manual aperture ring very often and usually stick my lenses uh, in A, auto mode, but very often when shooting the aperture ring gets turned by accident. This lock switch can lock it in auto mode so you won't turn at all, but also prevents you from accidentally putting it in auto mode when using it in manual mode. Very smart. 
Also for those who shoot astrophotography or for the times when you don't want to focus manual focus to change by accident, there's manual focus lock. Once you focus to infinity or on whatever you want, engaging that lock will disable the focus ring from changing anything. It simply disables it. And that brings me to that superb focus ring. Focus by wire, of course, but it is one of the nicest, smoothest and with just right amount of resistance focus rings out there. Another brand new feature designed with astrophotographers or landscape photographers in mind is the lens heater retainer, which is that lip around the front element to keep a heat strip firmly in place. Heat strips are used to stop condensation forming on the glass inside when working uh, shooting at night or at cold in cold temperatures. It's not fully weather sealed, it only has got rubber seal around the mount. Already nice and above board quality. Price and value for money? This is a tough one. This lens will retail for £859 here in UK or $899 in US. The problem is that if you do not care or don't need these new built-in features and you basically want 20mm focal range, Sigma 20mm f2 Contemporary will do great job for less money. However, this is f1.4 lens, high-end f1.4 lens that is not only a better investment long-term but also one that gives more performance-wise. There is no other f1.4 20mm lens available for Sony or in L mount right now and that I guess makes it a little bit more special. Also those extra built features like focus lock switch are something that you need and something that would change or improve your workflow then this also would make it great value for money. Conclusion great lens capable of great results. Focal length that is not too wide but wide enough for wide angle photography or filming. Although not small or feather light it is a very decent and respectful size and weight for f1.4 prime of this caliber. If you are astro or landscape photographer this could be the best 20 millimeter money could buy you. It is also a superb choice when you want wide but without not so desirable traits of the ultra wide angle lenses like this tall. This is a lens that is standing out and one that is totally worth investing in. I highly recommend it. And this is it from me. I hope this video was in some way informative or entertaining. If it was, please give me the thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram for more photos and videos from all of my reviews. Please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. There's almost zero. Hi. Most wide angle lenses are capable, capable, blah, 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 capable, filled. This is where this and the 24mm are making a statement and are standing a little bit out, a little bit uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> heavier, but it is a, 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 a. This one is the clickable, uh, the click, this one is the clickable with a switch, this one is the clickable with a switch, this one is. Oh. <laughs>